you had a piece out this past weekend mm -hmm. in Barron's in which you said you were talking to a couple of bears. Yeah, well, they don't I mean, like what's going on. Well, everything is so, so great. It can only get worse is kind of their, their, their theme. It's um, especially John Hussman, who has a, a, a good record for the, his fund, the Hussman's Fund, that things are overbought, overvalued, overextended, and overly a bullion. Right, right. So, I mean, all the good news is in is kind of what he says, and he's put together these indicators and said, when things get just, it seems everything's just too perfect, you know, hitting nice new highs is just the time when you've had some nasty spills in the market. Right, now let's go, let's go to this list here, because he's a, Hussman is in particular, he's a very analytical. Sure, uh, sure, quantitative. He's quantitative. Quantitatively yeah, driven yeah. market analyst here, and so he says, uh, or he said to you, and he's also written about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Is you know, look at look at these various indicators. He looks at the Schiller PE, which we won't go into sure. in a lot of detail, but that's you know, even Schiller yeah. would say it's at it's at a high. He looks at there's too much bullish sentiment. Then mm -hmm. we have the investors' intelligence sentiment. He looks at just the you know the the good market performance it, of the last few and, and how, years and how extended it is from from the from the trend. So getting extended is what sort of builds in this kind of reversion to the mean sort of sort of thing that 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 often uh, comes with crashes. Now Hussman has the problem, yeah. if you will, that he's been pretty wrong for a few years now. Well, he, he's been overly bearish. Uh, he was bearish going into the 2007-2008 crash, but he did not uh, participate in, enough in the recovery. Going back since his fund was formed in July of 2000, he missed the dot-com spill. He preserved uh, his client's capital. So, if you're going all the way back, if, you, if you're in it you got, since yeah, then. Yeah, but, but you know, you, know, yeah, you can't look no, at it that way because sure. the odds are he has, probably he, not. certainly in a strategic growth fund, now he has over $5 billion sure. in that fund. He probably didn't have $5 billion of, of it back exactly. there in 2000. But, you know, it, it's at the highs you should be cautious, not, right. not at the lows. Right, I understand. But, but I mean, his year-to-date performance, he's underperforming mm -hmm. by about 15%. That's, that's 1,500 sure. basis points sure. versus the S&P 500. Over three years, he's underperformed at annually by 27% a year. Mm -hmm. That's those are big numbers. I mean, I mean, if you have been a Hussman investor the last 5 years, you, you could not out. be very very you happy. You missed out. So, be that as it may, his his uh, indicators show that when when we've had these kinds of conditions, you've usually had to brace yourself for some nasty times ahead. Right. And yet by most traditional parameters of valuation, mm -hmm. very few people would agree with him if you look say just a traditional sure. PE. Nobody's looking at this market and going, geez, you know, mm -hmm. this thing is like you know, it's like 2000 dot com boom no, all no, over again. No, cer certainly not. It's be way below then. And compared to bond yields, uh, the market is fairly priced. But we have uh, supernaturally low bond yields right. from, uh, courtesy of the Fed. So everything's been lower. It's kind of. Uh, now, uh, can Hussman turn out to be right without a black swan type event? Meaning, without something really, really bad happening? What I didn't get into is that he sees the long term return from equities as being substandard for, for the risk that you're taking on, just only about 4% in real terms, which is way below the historic norm. So it, you might want to think twice about loading up the, the boat. Right. Just when when uh, the bullion is, is greatest now with Dow 13,000, right. etc. But any, any of us who've lived through, and you mm -hmm. and I have lived through quite a few speculative yeah. bubbles, this one, it doesn't feel, I mean, you, you know these things have a feel. Mm -hmm. I think the internet bubble, people sure. said, definitely felt like a bubble. People sure. talked about it. The real estate bubble, there were plenty of people who Absolutely. said this feels like a real estate bubble. Mm -hmm. The leverage, remember the big LBOs of 2006? But you still have very high ratings of, uh, of sentiment, of, of bullishness. And it's also this kind of, so what are you going to do with your money? It's, you're getting 0%. Right. You might as well throw it at the market. So, But right. preservation of capitalism is important. But let me ask you a question, Larry. Mm -hmm. If you would take a guess as to where the biggest bubble is right now, in the market, mm -hmm. would you say it's in the bond market, the government bond market as mm -hmm. a bubble, or would you say it's in the equity market right now? I mean, if we if we look out a few years from mm -hmm. now, we go, ah, we missed that bubble. Which bubble do you think we will have missed? Will it be in Hussman's terms, the equity bubble, or will it be the bond market bubble? I think both of them are, are, are vulnerable as soon as... Uh, when interest rates rise, that's a 2014 question. But uh, I, I think, yeah, Treasuries, actually, now that, now that you put the gun <laughs> to my head, Evan, 
Treasuries could actually lose a lot more simply because of the mathematics. A 30-year bond, if it goes, you know, rates go up 1%, you lose 30%, yeah. uh, no, 15% of your right. money. By the way, you know I agree with you on that, Randy, and we got to leave it there. So let's leave it on a point of agreement. 